So that's pretty much it from me, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Soundstage Take 2. Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here, and so I just finished reviewing the PSB B600 Synchrony loudspeakers that Paul Burden himself designed at the NRC. So if you don't know NRC, it's an Enequa chamber and everything is very well measured, very, very well documented, blind AB and all that stuff. So it's a very reputable company, PSB, and it's a Canadian brand. Woo, Canada, you know? But um, this speaker is quite interesting because it's kind of like not like other PSP speakers I've heard before, but at the same time, it is still a PSP speaker. So I just reviewed this speaker on Soundstage Take 2 series, so I will link that in the description below. It's the full-on review, but in this video, I'm gonna do more comparisons and stuff like that for my channel, I guess, because this is a quite interesting speaker. Now, if you look at the design, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's kind of reminds you of that Picard S400, the tweeter at the bottom, the woofer at the top. Now, but it's kind of like almost an entirely different design, but it's comparable. It's comparable because this is like going for that floor standard experience in a bookshelf, just like the original S400 did. Now, in comparison to the S400 Mark II, which we will get into later in this video, so stay tuned for that, it's not exactly the same thing. This is more closer to the original S400. And if you remember my comparison between the S400, the original, and the Mark II version, um, I, I said that the speakers are quite different, right? The original S400 has a mid-bass bump that has really great authority and smacks you in the face, immediate wow factor, while the Mark II has a more linear, more correct, more high-end type of linear response in the bass region. So. This one is quite interesting because this was designed by Paul Barden, who's a very respectable engineer in the industry, and he designed it at a reputable facility, which is the NRC, which is anechoic chambers and stuff like that. It's also where I measured my KLH speakers and found that it measured extremely well. So, properly designed speaker, and if you see it, it's you can tell it's properly designed. PSP baby. Anyways. So this is the speaker and you can see like, you know, really nice design. I love the gloss finish. At the same time, I hate it because it's a fingerprint magnet. I just cleaned it. So I'm gonna try not to touch it. But once you touch it, like it's a fingerprint magnet. Um, that's why I hate the gloss finish, uh, piano gloss specifically. But I mean, it looks nice and honestly, you know, just don't touch it. Um, they do have other finishes. So I think they have one other finish that's like Kind of like the veneer finish so you know that's rather what i would get here we have the tweeter and we have the woofer carbon fiber woofer um, and we have the front front plate as well which holds the you know the, ba the baffle which holds the drivers and makes it more sturdy and all that so i actually go into this in the actual review for soundstage so i'm not going to go into it too much in this video about the design and specifically about the speaker uh, but you know we're going to compare sounds it is backported, double binding post for by wiring, by amping, or whatever you wish. So yeah, this is the speaker. Oh, and one last thing. Um, this speaker is on a lower stand right now than you know, other speakers that I will be comparing to because this speaker, actually the access point is not the tweeter, not between the tweeter, but the woofer, which is quite interesting, which means that when I sit down, um, I need to have the woofer at ear height rather than anywhere else on the speaker. So quite interesting design. Okay, time for comparison. Wow, quite the lineup we got here. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, I love my job. Oh, glorious Maximus. We have four speakers here that I love very much. And therefore, that's why I'm going to be enjoying this comparison. Now, the Picard S400 Mark II and the PSB B600 
Synchrony is going to be the main comparison in this video, but of course I'm gonna throw in the CSS Audio 1 TDX that I reviewed recently, because how can I not after raving about it so much? At least I gotta give you guys something. So we're gonna give you a little comparison there. And then we're gonna have the Sonos Fabric Electamator 3. Now all these are similar price ranges, except for the Sonos Faber Electamator 3, which is a $10,000 speaker. Now with this being said, all the exact pricing and the specifications, you know, all that, all that jumbo build quality and in more, in more depth of each speaker, I've done a video for every single one of these. So I'll link it in the description below for you guys to check out. So make sure to check out if you're interested in, uh, you know, a specific speaker after this kind of brief comparison, if you so will. So I spent a good amount of time this morning just comparing them again, but I've heard individually and you know for a length of time, each speaker was a great success in my books. Now it's interesting because most of these speakers are trying to achieve the same goal, which is kind of get that floor standing experience from a bookshelf. And I feel like this is kind of like an ongoing trend on bookshelves these days. You know, some do go for like just purely that bookshelf factor where the high frequency and mid range is excellent, but the sacrifice of base range. Well, these are trying to be like more all rounders and become closer to like one fit all solution in terms of base, mid range, and high frequency, which is really nice to see for people who just don't have the room for a floor stander or, you know, want a better imaging and sound staging experience than from a floor standing speaker. And if you didn't know, one of the merits, one of the positives of a bookshelf speaker is that it has inherently a better imaging and sound staging just by design. And that's true for all these speakers. Like I love the fact that these, all these sound stage and image very, very well. And what I mean by that is like, if I am speaking from the dead center, the center imaging is directly on point. Meaning you don't hear me more from the left channel or from the right channel, you know, you hear me dead center. The speakers disappear, as people say. So that factor is excellent on really any of these. In terms of like little details and stuff, we'll talk about that in a minute, but those are also very excellent, you know, being able to pinpoint each instrument within the sound stage so it doesn't sound like all one jumbo just thrown at you. That's also excellent on all of these speakers. You know, one is better than the others, but we'll talk about that very soon. Now in terms of sound staging, what I mean by that is like, you know, how wide, how deep it sounds, right? You don't want it like a 2D field. Sometimes with these speakers with the right amplification, I hear stuff like behind me to the side. And that's you know, when you got the placement really, really dialed in is you get those like little nuances. So one of the tracks I play is yellow. And <laughs> my God, do, 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 okay. I I'm terrible at this, but it gives you like these little, it's freaky. That's how my friend put it, freaky. It's a freaky experience when you get it just right. And you can get that practically with any of these speakers with the correct amplification and a little bit of time and finessing with the placement. So I just wanna get that out of the way. These are all excellent speakers. People always think one is like heaps amounts better than the other, but my job entails really nitpicking each little detail at this point because these speakers are all so excellent and it's just like little details that really make the buying decision, at least for me. So here we go. Bacard S400 Mark II versus the PSB B600 Synchrony. So the B600 Synchrony is a speaker that has a lot of bass response. Like it's the mid, there's a mid bass exaggeration in my opinion. And even though it doesn't go all the way down to 20 Hertz, like you feel the rumble, you feel it in your chest. So in that way, it has that immediate wow factor that goes like, whoa, this is coming from a bookshelf speaker. In fact, every time I play the speaker to a friend, that's the first response I get is, hey, oh my God, you don't have any subwoofers on here, do you? It's coming from that speaker alone, that, that amount of bass. It's a really amazing factor. And you know what other speaker I got that response from? The original Bacard S400, not the, not the Mark II. But, this speaker has a little bit more, like more bass. And so one of the downside with this speaker, particularly in the bass region, is that you do need some space from the wall behind it. I would say at least two feet to start out with, minimum. Whereas this speaker here, Bacard S400 Mark II, 
has a more linear base response, meaning it actually digs lower than the B600 or the original Bocard S400. However, you don't get that immediate wow factor. In fact, if you play them side by side, no, bap, bap, you'll be like, wait a minute, this one has more bass. It gives you an impression of more bass. But over time, while you're listening to music, you understand that this has a more linear bass extension, giving you that more smooth out, smooth out, smooth out, smooth it out. You get the point. <laughs> gives you a more smooth bass response that's more linear, giving you a rumble, you know, not so much a mid bass, no, bop, bop. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but you guys get the point. Now, where did you ever hear mid bass bump before? Probably in my Solus Fabric Electamator 3 review. And yes, the Electamator 3 does have a mid bass bump, but I feel like the mid, mid, mid bass bump on the Electamator is a lot more tasteful than the PSB. I feel that the Electamator 3 has just a bit enough to fool you like there is no mid bass bump. Like, wow, that sounds great. But at the same time, it's pretty neutral is the way you would think it if you didn't compare to a zillion other speakers. Whereas the PSP is immediate. It's an immediate thing. Like the, the original S400 was obvious. Mid bass bump. Whoa, that mid bass. Boom. Explosion. That's what it does. Stone's fiber, not so much. It's tasteful. You know, just like Italiano. Tasteful. Whereas the CSS Audio does have a slight mid bass exaggeration, but just a, just a smidge. It's like even more tasteful. But at the, at times I do wish it was a little bit more, you know, just for that musicality factor. But technically, it is more closer to the Bocard S400 Mark II in the fact that it extends lower and is kind of more linear, with a slight bit of more character than the S400 Mark II in the mid bass region. So. That's the base comparison right there. Which one you ever pick? The linear side, CSS Audio and Bocard S400 Mark II, or a little bit of character from the PSB and the Sonos Fiber Electamator 3. Now, with this being said, I do have to say that the mid bass bump does translate into the mid range, obviously, in terms of the overall tonality. So, meaning, you know, the, the lower frequencies of uh, a guitar, or my voice, or anyone's voice, singer, instruments, you know, it kind of all, it's not like it's segregated, it's all connected. So the mid bass does um, what I like to call complement the mid range overall tone. Now, on the S400 Mark II, it's pretty neutral all the way through. Like, the, it's smooth, and you feel like it's not really affected by any mid-range bump because there's really no mid-range bump. It's the linear, most linear speaker on the list here. Whereas the CSS Audio 1 TDX, you get a little bit of that tasteful. Like if you're a male vocal, like for example, uh, this track right here, I love this track for testing male vocals because it has this earthy, girthy, you know, voices. So on these tracks specifically, you know, the CSS Audio 1 TDX does have a more earthy, tone and I do appreciate that and it's, it's tasteful. You go to the Sonos Fiber and it's like, whoa, oh, you know, tasteful, more mid bass bump. So you get that more tonal char character, whether you like it or not. It's not correct by any means, but it's not neutral, but you know what? It's tasteful and that's why I bought it because I like that tastefulness. And then we have the PSP B600. You would think because it has the most mid bass bump, it will be even more like exaggerated. Nope. <laughs> One of the thing about this speaker that still baffles me is how clean the mid range is and the high frequency is, even though it has that bass exaggeration. Usually when it's exaggerated to this extent, you get that mid range and high frequency to be a bit veiled. You know, it's not balanced out with the rest of the frequency, but in this case, you don't get that. Even more so than the S400, the original, this speaker is just really good at segregating the bass from the mid-range to the high frequency in such a way that the mid-bass bump doesn't really add anything to the mid-range tone. The mid-range mid tone is actually more similar 
to the Mark II and the CSS Audio 1TDX, which are two of the more linear sounding speakers in the mid bass region. So quite impressive. So in terms of tone, I would say that for character, Sonos Faber is number one. I would say the most clinical sounding, analytical sounding, more most correct sounding, more, more edged out sounding, detailed sounding mid-range is the PSB. And the more musical is actually the Picard S400 Mark II with the one TDX being right down the middle. And we're talking about smidge differences here. Please understand, this could literally change with changing an amplification to something like tube versus solid state or whatever, <laughs> like smidge differences. The biggest difference is actually the Stone's Fabers mid-range. And that's why I got it because it has that character compared to the other three. Now in terms of the high frequency, now this is where it gets interesting because the S400 Mark II is again, it extends very well. PSP extends very well. CSS Audio 1TDX, guess what? Extends very well. So it's probably like Time Tour 3, guess what? Extends very well. So this is why you guys always like see the same review and you know, see the same terminology at times because they all do extend very well. But there are smidge differences and that's what we're gonna go over right now. So CSS Audio 1TDX starting first is the most extended in my opinion. It's between the Focal and Sonos Faber speakers in a way. It's very pinpoint, it is very detailed, it is very uh, airy but smooth at the same time, but it's not the smoothest sounding speaker out of these four. But it just has just enough edge to where you can discern everything, all the details are there and it's a freak experience. So out of detail, you know, out of like extension, high frequency refinement level, I would say the 1TDX is number one here. In terms of smoothness, while retaining that high frequency is probably the Bacard S400 Mark II. Again, very small differences. I could choose this or the 1TDX for detail and all those nuances, but the 1TDX just cake, takes the cake because it's just slightly more extended, slightly more crispier than the Bacard S400 Mark II on the high frequency. And that's by design on purpose, you know, the Mark II is a smooth sounding speaker in the high frequency. It's not rolled off, that's not what I'm talking about. All the details are there, it's just more smoother on the edges. So if you want a little bit more edge, that's the 1TDX. Again, smidge differences here. Next up would be the PSB B600. And actually the high frequency is a little bit more edged out than the Bacard S400 Mark II here but I do find it that the high frequency is just not as refined as the other two, the 1TDX and the S400 Mark II. And then we have the Sonos Fabric. Now the Sonos Fabric is interesting because it is extended, but at the same time, it is the most rolled off out of all these four. And I'm not talking about being rolled off where you lose detail or it sounds dark sounding or muddy or grainy. I'm talking about the fact that out of the four, it is the uh, least, extended, meaning you don't get brightness whatsoever. That's why Tujin loves it so much, right? He doesn't like bright whatsoever. There's no fatigue whatsoever, but you have all the detail that you need and so on and so forth, but it's not as crispy, edged, or technically the best high frequency out of these four, technically speaking. Technically speaking, so I guess the 1TDX and the Bacard S400 Mark II is kind of like a tie in my books in the high frequency. And then we have the PSB and the Sonos Fiber depending on taste. And technically speaking, they're pretty close because even technical level, you know, I guess, no, I guess the Sonos Fiber kind of wins there, but just by a smidge, but depends on really taste at this point, again. Now in terms of sound staging, meaning how wide and how deep, very simply put, the Bacard S400 Mark II and the CSS Audio 1TDX has the deepest soundstage. I would say both have great layering and just by a smidge, again, just, it's just, just seriously just by a smidge. And this could literally change, like I said, by using a tube amplifier or a different solid state amplifier. The CSS Audio 1TDX does have a slightly more deeper soundstage. And again, talk about smidge differences here. Both are excellent. And after that, I would say the Sonos Faber Electamator 3 has the best uh, soundstage in terms of depth. And then after that would be the PSB. So 
That's how I would put it. Again, very close differences here. And again, this could change literally with changing amplification or whatever it is. And now for the width. In terms of width, they're basically all tied. I would say the CSS Audio 1 TDX is the best in this category in terms of how wide it sounds in my room. But it's just by a smidge. I mean, it's just by a smidge. All these speakers soundstage amazingly well in width and depth. It's just by a smidge. Because look, that's their strength, their bookshelf speakers. Now in terms of imaging, which is also their strength, I would say a clear win is actually the CSS Audio 1 TDX. And that's why I say it's a technically a great performing speaker even compared to the $10,000 one slabber speakers because technically speaking, I can hear all the little nuances and stuff very, very well. The imaging is almost perfect, it's dead on without being bright like Focal speakers do for me. Focal and BMW speakers sound bright for me. Not all models, but most models I should say. I can respect what they do. And there's one thing that I do really like about them is that imaging, right? You can almost draw it out. Like it's just so pinpoint, but at the cost of that musicality, at the cost of like my ear fatigue. Whereas the 1TDX, I have no ear fatigue, but I get that. That's why I love it so much in terms of that imaging. That's the cake, you know, for me. Now out of the three that's left over here, I would say in terms of imaging, there is no clear winner, but there is a clear loser and that's the PSB B600. And uh, regretfully to say, I find the high frequency imaging, the separation is not as good. Meaning I do feel like it's kind of crowded at times, especially on busy tracks. But with that being said, it is still pretty darn good. The compared to the other two though, I feel like it is a little bit lacking. The Bacardi S400 Mark II and the Stone's Fiber Electometer 3 is pretty darn good at imaging. And that's quite impressive actually on the Electama Tour 3 part because it is a more smooth sounding speaker. It's kind of harder to do that, you know, even compared to the you know, Mark II. But anyways, uh, that's basically imaging right there. What else? Tone. Uh, let's talk about tone for a minute before I finish up this video. And I would say that in terms of tone, my favorite is the Sonos Faber Electama Tour 3. In terms of personal preference solely. I mean, I bought it for a reason, guys. It's just not just the looks. People say, you bought it just because of the looks. You know, do, do I look like a guy that would just go for the looks? Huh? Okay, jokes aside, in the next, I would be looking at the uh, Mark II, Bacardi S400 Mark II, and the CSS Audio 1 TDX. Both tone is excellent. I would say the tone on the Bacard is more on the smoother side whereas the 1TDX is a little bit more stringy, meaning a little bit more brighter, but not to the extent that you get ear fatigue. Like for example, like let's say I'm playing a guitar and I go ding, right? On the S400 Mark II, you will not hear any scrapes or things like zzz, you know, one of those zzz. You won't hear any fatigue with that. It will just sound smooth like zzz, you know, zzz, you know, beautiful. Uh, on the 1TDX, you get that, like you will able to hear the, the scrapes on the thing and you will get, you, you will know that it's a scrape. Like you'll be like, oh yeah, I hear that. But you don't get ear fatigue. You almost like get goosebumps instead. On contrast, on some Focal speakers, for example, or uh, BMW speakers, I would just be crying. And I would be like, Ugh! like, you know? Okay, I'm not trying to offend anyone here. I'm just trying to put it into context in a funny way. You know, it's over exaggeration here. Please understand. Um, <laughs> okay, back here. So the PSB, in my opinion, is a little bit on the more less refined side in terms of that string. It doesn't sound natural to me in terms of that kind of uh, way. It just doesn't sound as tonally correct to me like the CSS Audio 1TDX. Um, or the totem speakers, for example, or these, you know, Mark IIs. I just feel like, I just feel like it's lacking a little bit in that musicality aspect, and I think that's the tone, overall tone. It's very nice, don't get me wrong, it's very technically a well-performing speaker with a lot of bass, if you want that. In fact, I would, see that, I would love to see this in like home theaters but you're gonna have to get rid of the gloss finish for home theaters because it's gonna reflect like crazy. 
But you know, out, out of all these speakers, I would say the most impressive wow factor you're gonna get is definitely the PS, PSB. You're definitely gonna go, whoa, that bass, man, it smacks. Okay, so that was a lengthy one, but now it's time for ranking them. Now, in terms of technical capabilities, meaning I'm not talking about measurements, I'm talking about, in my opinion, which one has the technically a better performance uh, in terms of detail, in terms of bass response, in, term, in terms of mid-range, not musicality, but the technical performance in my books goes number one to the CSS Audio 1 TDX, followed by the Picard S400 Mark II, and then the Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3. And last place, fortunately, goes to the PSB. Now, in terms of musicality, in terms of what I personally prefer, number one goes to the Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3, just because of that wonderful tone. Number two, goes to the CSS Audio 1 TDX and the Bacard S400 Mark II. So both are tied for second place. I really can't choose one or the other. They're both excellent and I, I I'll probably cry without one of them. And then the last place, unfortunately, again, I just don't prefer that PSB sound in, you know, even with that bass exaggeration, uh, it goes to the PSB for last place. So that's pretty much it, my honest, unfiltered opinion. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if it was helpful to you, please leave a thumbs up if it was entertaining, if it was fun, please do leave a thumbs up. It does help the channel out tremendously. And I'll see you guys on the next one. And oh, and most importantly, it doesn't cost you anything. See you on the next one. Peace.